Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. Now, this story isn't inherently about The Bachelor, but there have been plenty of people within The Bachelor franchise, uh, some that are former professional athletes, that have weighed in on this story. So, uh, what we have here is... A Shakari Richardson has spoken out after testing positive, after a positive test left her suspended from part of the Tokyo Games. She tested positive for THC, which is the main chemical found in marijuana. Now she, of course, was the uh, you know the our main hundred meter sprinter. She won the trials. She's the fastest women woman in the U.S., if not the world. And she was just ready to soar. Her mother, her mother, her biological mother passed away uh, just a week before the trials. And it was it was a, it was a very feel good story that she's overcome so much in her life to get to this point. And then of course we find out that she fails the drug test. Now, so the question becomes: Is this drug test is THC and marijuana a performance enhancing drug? I think the general consensus is no, but we're going to read up on it. The general consensus is no. There are people that think marijuana is a performancing a performance enhancing drug, and then there are those. That have smoked marijuana, and there are there isn't much of a you know I know look I'd love for your comment if you've uh, regularly smoked marijuana or know enough about it to tell me why it might be performance enhancing. But there are plenty of things that are performance enhancing that are illegal that are illegal. This coffee I'm drinking, uh, there's plenty of things pre workout pills. Now the question is, uh, marijuana maybe it's a nice way to um, to relax after competing and recover. And I would say that it's a better painkiller than prescription drugs, which are legal. Now, it, it all comes down to the money. It all comes down to the money. There has been a lot of money to be made in big pharma. They run our government in certain ways. They throw tons of money to lobby the government. And there's plenty of um, truths coming out that big pharma has been sued for. You know, senseless overdosing, senseless addiction, just, you know, pharmaceutical sales. Anyway, the whole point is, is that We've got someone who smoked something out of the ground that's not performance enhancing, but is an illegal substance. How do we make this right? Will this story be enough to flip everything on its head? The whole system that has marijuana as a illegal and dangerous drug is racist to begin with. It goes all the way back to uh, the fear that's instilled in people that um, that 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 you might you know bad things will happen because of someone who's on dope, okay? Everything from sexual assault to, um, you know, uh, la your laziness, it'll ruin your life because you, you won't be able to get out of bed, all these different things. Meanwhile, all violent crimes are due to either stimulants or depressants, alcohol, crack, all these other, all these other drugs, hard drugs. No one's smoking a bunch of weed. Now, don't get me wrong. You can have the, you, the right edible can hit you the wrong way for sure. But performance enhancing is the question here. So there's always going to be an anecdotal story as well. My buddy just smoked weed and he, you know, lit up whatever on fire. Yeah. Okay. There's always going to be that. But the question is, will she cross that hundred meter dash that finish line faster because she smoked weed? No. Now we have some wild comments. Emmanuel Acho, bananas. I'm about to read for you his Twitter comment. I'm like, oh, Emmanuel Acho, he... A uh, guest hosted the after the final rose after Chris Harrison was stepping aside, who has now stepped down. And he, um, I was like, oh, he's a smart guy. He's a former pro athlete. He's a commentator. He's going to have a great take on this. No, bad take. I couldn't believe it. Luckily, I read his take before reading the comments below. So my opinion wasn't sways. So I was like, what the hell kind of take is that? So I'll read his. Now we have Jade Roper down here says, let her run. It's as simple as that. Sometimes, you know, uh, brevity is a virtue. Let her run. Let her run. Let her run the race. So she violated, as far as I know, she violated uh, the drug test, but not the Olympic drug test. So I don't see why the rules can't be changed like immediately for marijuana as an illegal substance. We know in states like California, you can grab your 21-year-old ID and walk in and get married. You can bring up to eight grams of marijuana into Los Angeles international airport and get onto that plane what happens on the other side who knows but the point is is that people go okay hold on a second what are we doing here what are we doing let's readjust let's reevaluate the prison system is clogged with people who have drug offenses and then they get a felony and then they can't vote and then there's all these other things it's modern day slavery stop and frisk uh you know you know uh, per, you know being uh, kind of 
uh, subjecting minorities to stop and frisk in New York City. That's that's gone with because we saw how damaging that was. Because of course, if you target a specific group of people, you're going to find more crimes and drugs than if you don't target someone else. Clearly, as Wall Street had all these illegal things going on, we were too busy wondering which of these 15-year-old boys had a bag of weed on him. Okay, so big issues, big things that need to be discussed. So we'll get right into it. I did want to shout out real quick on my vlog channel, new video, how I got 10 million views on my Bachelor Recap channel in the last six months. So you can go check that out on my vlog channel. Thank you guys all so much for just blowing my mind with these numbers. So let's just get into some other news here. Uh, Dwayne Wade. But majority of y'all rule makers smoke and probably are investors in THC companies. Let's stop playing these games, right? It was, uh, weed, weed became illegal. Oh, hemp's bad, you know, this, that. Weed became illegal for profit reasons. You know, it all, it all goes back to money. Now that people are starting to vote on it and realizing, oh my gosh, this plant, this is the golden goose. We, this is a lot of money that can be made from this plant. Not to mention how much the government can tax it, this and that. The rules are changing. People are getting, people are investing. And there needs to be a solution for the percentage of black and minorities that are in prison because of low level like drug crime charges there needs to be some sort of equity system where they get a stake in, 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 in now the profiting of the thing that put them behind bars and ruined their lives and changed their direct, their direction. This, this is now look, I'm going to get people. Cause I know this, we have a, our country's all over the map politically. I understand not a political issue. Those, if you're Republican, I'm telling you the people that you voted into office, they smoke dope. They do all the things that they're voting against, okay? If you're on the left, look, the same thing. It's, it shouldn't, we, I'm, ta- I'm, on, the, I'm on the live stream. You talking to me? T- Tasha, you talking to me? Yeah, Tasha just yelled at me. Anyway, maybe she's smoking a little weed today. It's a Friday, folks. All right, so point is, let's keep this going. Let's keep this party going here. We're going to get into all this. She said, I am human. All right, we well, already showed that graphic, so let's go to, I said, I said this. What about THC is performance enhancing? She's an Olympic athlete, not doing a Coney Island hot dog eating contest. Can you imagine this world? Natalie said, if anything, it negatively impacts your performance. They should have given her a head start. Well, Kay says, I worked with athletes at the U.S. Olympic Training Center. The national government bodies in the USOC have their laws, and it's not as if the athletes don't know them. This is unfortunate. The problem with laws is they, they're laws until they get changed, right? And laws need to get amended and, and switched up. In the NFL, they, they're, I don't know the exact laws in the NFL, but they're committing to stop prosecuting and, and suspending people for weed offenses. Because what they're realizing is the best thing you can do for your body after after the violent sport of football, you know, you have a game on Sunday at 4 p.m. The best thing you can do after the ice bath and an ibuprofen is to probably have some weed. Literally the best thing you can do. It, once you get into like uh, taking uh, painkillers and other drugs, no, that's, that's dangerous. That's a dangerous place where you can get addicted to heavy, heavy stuff. Um, Darlene says, it's typical. I have to say that it's helped me concentrate for 50 plus years. I've imbibed when studied for certification and recertification tests. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe yeah, if you're a heart surgeon, maybe you're not high. You know, if there's certain things, maybe you don't do them. Now, here's Emmanuel Lacho. This is where it gets banana land. Because I thought his take would be completely different. He played in the NFL. He's now a host on Fox Sports and he's in, on all these Lexus commercials and all that. He said, legalizing weed in track and field competition is all good if you're running in a straight line. Legalizing weed in track and field competition is terribly dangerous if you throw the javelin. Where do we draw the line? This, uh, <laughs> this, this is the worst take. First of all, javelin and hammer throw, they have those little dugouts so you can only throw it in a certain direction or it's going to hit a net okay that's that's i'll tell you where we draw the line emmanuel we're we're not we're not worrying about someone being too drunk to to throw a javelin in there in a a sea of people what are you talking about shiv ramda says bro lawrence taylor smoked crack and threw himself head first into 350 pound men for 10 years it will be okay i promise you he said, we're looking at performance enhancing drugs the wrong way. They don't just make you better. They can also keep you from getting worse. What? 
Let's play Talk this. Talk about performance enhancing, because so many people are talking about the aspect that weed doesn't make you faster, it doesn't make you stronger, it doesn't make you quicker. Remember, to enhance something is either to add a positive or to subtract a negative. Oh. If you All right, no ibuprofen. You got to get rid of ibuprofen then. You know, you go oh, headache, no Advil. Oh, you, oh, oh, you're exhausted, no sleeping. What are you talking about? Huh? the negative, that enhances you. Yeah. If you add a positive, that enhances you. Okay, so if you ice your knees, that enhances you. Because, you're, of course, you're getting rid of the inflammation that's caused after... What are you talking about, Emmanuel? Come on, I thought we were buddies. What are you doing? If someone says, man, when they eat, they do be subtracting hunger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Twitter... I gotta read that again. Man, when they eat, they do be subtracting hunger. What are you talking... Oh, so Emmanuel, you're being called to the principal's office. Bring your phone. I don't think the athletes will be doing bong rips as they warm up for the throw. This is silly. <laughs> Emmanuel, you got to apologize for even thinking this way. Alcohol is permitted, so apparently all athletes are just wasted out there. Why shouldn't painkillers be illegal too then? They subtract the pain that comes from playing the sports, which in turn is enhancing the athlete. No matter how much you get cyberbullied for this take, I want you to know it's not enough cyberbullying. Oh my gosh, this is making my Friday. I feel as bad as I... I, I feel so bad for the runner here who is actually losing all of her Olympic dreams, but wow, is he getting roasted. Jason Whitlock walked so that Emmanuel Acho could run. Legalizing weed in track and field. Okay, so we already said, love you, my guy, but the issue at hand is not weed. It's mental health. They are allowed to drink alcohol and throw the javelin. That line isn't quite a line. That's literally what reports say happened. It's only banned during the competition. What? That just means it was in our system during the competition testing. Piss test will pop negative, will pop positive for around a month normally. She wasn't lighting up a J before she stepped into the blocks, man. Yeah, this is an example where Emmanuel just doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. THC stays in your blood for a long time. So it's probably that like weeks before, who knows? Who knows when, when this happened? But like, how bizarre. Uh, someone said, holy shit, I thought this was a troll tweet, but MF her really thinks she's lit running around the track. <laughs> I heard Black Lives Matter was hunting police down with javelins. This is a real problem, primarily in our cities due to fathers loose. Okay, well, look, the point is here, uh, crack, cocaine, pot, blow, acid, hookah, heroin, speed. Oh, boy. Yeah, Emmanuel Acho's tweet was like Michael Scott. Just didn't make any sense. Um but marijuana stays in your system for a while. Do we know she did it literally right before competition? Hell, even if she did it the night before, it wouldn't impact her on race day. Marijuana is banned only during competition periods, which are defined as beginning at 11.59 p.m. on the day before competition and ending at its conclusion. Athletes may have up to 150 nanograms per milliliter of THC, the main psychoactive substance in marijuana, without causing a positive test. You mean the young lady that admitted she was strong and took her punishment? Uh, and also she smoked out of competition, which means it wasn't the day before or day of. It is also a part of the reason why they reduced her suspension. But research would have revealed that. They said Friday that Richardson's suspension was reduced because her use of cannabis occurred out of competition and was unrelated to sport performance. Well, get her back on the blocks. Unrelated to sport performance. Okay. Well, if this is what the USADA said, and they're the governing body, which I don't know if that's the case, because I'm not vetting this source. I'm just saying it's got, you know, someone with a check mark saying it. So we're going to take it with a grain of salt right now. But if that's the case, and it's not sports performance, then you're just banning her for smoking weed, a substance that is legal in plenty of states. So Emmanuel said, suspending athletes for smoking weed is dumb. Smoking weed knowing you will be drug tested is also dumb. Regardless of if it's dumb that she may or may not smoke marijuana maybe it's a part of her daily life maybe it's been in her system for a long time it doesn't one thing doesn't negate the other right as emmanuel say the subtraction just because someone's dumb doesn't mean smoking okay you know what i mean um wow okay well i think we got all we need to get out of there so we have an article is marijuana a performance enhancing drug that's what it all comes down to and regardless even if it were which it's not you know i mean i feel like I feel like I'm having like a deja. I feel like I had an edible right now. Cause I'm like, is this, are we even having this conversation in 2021? She, she's, she, it, she was on the path to becoming a national hero. One that we really need right now in our country. The Olympics are a celebration, right? 
We celebrate our country as other countries celebrate celebrate theirs. There are certain countries that you know their their faith and livelihood in in their joie de vivre is built around the support of like a mythical athlete athletic endeavor. Okay, that's what it's all about. That's what the Olympics is all about. It's about something that's bigger than us. Okay. So to take this away from us, it's watering down and creating a story. And look, I understand the rules are the rules. So whoever whoever gave the drug test hit the box and you know, she's tested positive. They're scientists. They're doing their rules. It's not too late to change this. It's not too late to say, you know what? Like, like take all the athletes that competed, right? All the athletes and give them a test. Are we going to exempt her from this drug uh, offense so she can go run the 100-meter dash and then get the law changed. I think 100% of people go, yeah, this is BS. This is, uh, this is ridiculous. On Thursday, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency announced Shakari Richardson, the sprinter who lit up June's Olympic... Oh, that's a weird word choice. Lit up June's Olympic track and field trials with their orange hair and blazing, t- blazing times. Are they doing this on purpose? And the women's 100-meter race tested positive for marijuana would face a ban from international competition. She's the second U.S. track athlete to be sanctioned for marijuana this year. Sprinter Kamari Montgomery was suspended in June. Why is marijuana a banned drug in athletic competition? It certainly only ever depressed my performance, but is it somehow considered performance enhancing? Well, it's complicated. USADA's page on marijuana explains that the drug is banned by the World Anti-Doping Association, whose rules USADA must follow because it meets three criteria. It poses a health risk to athletes. It has the potential to enhance performance and uh, potential to enhance performance. Uh, and see, it violates the spirit of sport. You know what? You know what violates the spirit of sport? All the f- pharmaceutical companies that sell us painkillers ki- to mask the problems that they started. Officially, a drug need uh, a drug need only meet two of the three criteria to be banned. But USADA links to a 2011 WADA sponsored paper that declares the drug meets all three criteria. All right, so we're 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 trusting all this on a 10 year old paper. Well, let's change the, uh, the, the findings in the paper. Let's get a new paper. Can we get a new paper? Uh, while that paper acknowledges that cannabis is often portrayed as a substance that has detrimental effects on performance, researchers nonetheless speculate. Oh, nothing like speculation when you're doing science. I, you, you know me, empirical laws? No, I like speculation, okay? Uh, maybe the world's flat, just speculating. They speculate that the drug has the potential... Oh, they speculate on a potential. You know, people speculated that I had the potential to be something with my life, but it doesn't mean, okay. To enhance performance based on research, survey response, responses from French university students and anecdotal evidence from blogs and drug hotlines. This is garbage. For instance, one study noted that athletes use cannabis for relief of anxiety and stress and perhaps to reduce muscle spasms. Athletes self-reporting to WADA's hotline, the study says, describe marijuana as a drug that has significant positive effects in sports, such as improvement of vision for goalkeepers and muscle relaxation. Look, oh boy. I don't think marijuana is performance enhancing. The idea of performance enhancing is something that's going to artificially increase your strength, endurance, things like that. We need to get away the idea of performance enhancing being something that's going to reduce your stress, anxiety, or or give you better vision. That's This is garbage i don't think marijuana is is performance enhancing or that it should be banned in any sport said david epstein author of the sports gene who's reported on doping issues for sports illustrated and pro publica but he noted that some of wada believed the drug might offer benefits in sports like the biathlon where calming and relaxing effects might be useful i would view a runner getting banned from marijuana as collateral damage for wada's idea that it might help in other sports but again i don't really buy it all right so maybe a, a bicyclist, is that what they're saying? A biathlon? Or is a biathlon, a, no, is, is the biathlon the, the skiing and shooting? That's a weird sport. Get high, shoot a few pigeons. What are you going to do? That's a weird sport. I feel like people in Vermont just getting high, going to nice cross-country skiing, a little skeeting, smoke a little J. The head of USADA, Travis Tigard, is a frequent critic of WADA. In fact, USADA withheld annual dues from the international organization this year in protest of WADA's inability to change more quickly. Changing anything at WADA is a Byzantine process, though he noted with approval the organization's removal of CBD from the ban list in 2019. Oh, well, stop the press. They removed cannabis oil. What's it called? CBD. Cannabidiol? Cannabidiol? Cannabidiol oil? Whatever it's called. CBD. From the ban list, which there's absolutely, okay. 
it's it's the non-THC part of weed. Nevertheless, USADA is bound by WADA's restrictions, not by changing opinions about marijuana in the U.S. or even the laws of the state where Richardson used marijuana. Oregon, where recreational pot is, to put it lightly, extremely legal. Oregon, of course. Nothing but wildfires and people burning down some marijuana. Notably, USADA's official release about Richardson's positive test does not mention performance enhancement at all. Instead, it focuses on marijuana's status as a substance of abuse. In early 2021, recognizing that some banned substances are used recreationally and not for reasons related to performance, WADA named a group of, substi- of substi- substances of abuse, including cannabis. Athletes who test positive for these drugs can face shorter suspensions if they sh- show their use of the drug was not related to competition. That's why Richardson's suspension is for only one month, not three Richardson used marijuana, she said Friday, to cope emotionally with the death of her biological mother during the Olympic trials. How tragic. How tragic. Mother dies a week before the biggest day of her life. She wins and then finds out it's taken away. We got to get this back for her, guys. We got to do something about this. I, I think the right amount of pressure can be put on to change this. This story is going to flip the way we view marijuana because it all comes down to ignorance. Ignorance and money and power that were put into place to make people believe a certain thing about this drug. I don't smoke often. I could use some right now. I don't smoke often. But uh, I, I know it's not performance enhancing. Now, could it be a substance abuse? Yeah, you could, you could abuse substances. Maybe it doesn't have a physical addiction. Maybe it's mental. People argue this all the time. But, you know, I, I'm addicted to sugar, okay? It's bad for me, but I still have to learn how to be you know, moderate about my addiction. People are, you know, family, uh, alcohol runs in my family. People are addicted to opioids. People overdose. You know, it's, there's addictions all over. So it, we're not, just because someone might be addicted to marijuana doesn't mean if this violates the uh, tradition of, uh, of sports or whatever they said here. What does WADA still believe that marijuana enhances performance or are the new substance of abuse regulations a way of beginning to back off of that decision? A, a spokesperson from WADA would not comment setting an ongoing case and referring me to USADA. A spokesperson from USADA would not comment on the record, but it is worth noting a more recent academic paper, Cannabis and the Health and Performance of the Elite Athlete, published in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine in 2018. So a little bit more recent. Uh, The paper surveys research on the subject, which it notes is scant. There is no evidence for cannabis use as a performance enhancing drug. Yes, scant is a good thing. Hey, did that, uh, do you, do you have any STDs? Well, according to the research, there is scant evidence. Okay. There is no evidence for cannabis use as a performance enhancing drug. Conclude the paper's five authors who include a specialist in medical marijuana, several sports medicine practitioners, and Dr. Alan Vernick. Dr. Vernick's day job, medical director of the World Anti-Doping Agency. It's fascinating because while it's tragic in this one singular case, it's got so many more repercussions. So many more repercussions. uh, Just exposing so much hypocrisy that exists in our world. Let's see what um, she had to say today on uh, the Today Show. Good morning, Shakari. I just want to ask a simple question first. How are you doing? Um, I'm blessed to be alive. Blessed to be alive. That's yeah. about it. <laughs> this is not easy. This is a hard moment that you're in right now. And I, I thank you for being on. And I know you wanted to tell your story. So tell me, you know, what happened? What led up to this positive test? Um, just honestly... Boy, just I want to take responsibility for my actions. I know what I did. I know what I'm supposed to do. Um, no, I'm not. I'm I'm allowed not to do, and I still made that decision. But um, not making an excuse or looking for any empathy in my case. But just, however, being in that position of my life, finding out something like that, something that I would say is probably one of the biggest things that have impacted me positively and negatively in my life when it comes to dealing with the relationship I have with my mother. So that definitely was a very heavy topic on me. And people don't understand what it's like to have to... Our people do. We all have our different struggles. We all have our different things we deal with. But to put on a face, to have to go in front of the world and put on a face Mm -hmm. and hide my pain... um, like, who, I don't know, who are you, or who am I to tell you how to cope when 
you're dealing with a pain or you're dealing with a struggle that you've never experienced before or that you've never thought you would have to deal with. Like, who am I to tell you how to cope? Who am I to tell you that you're wrong for hurting? So I think just honestly, just leading up to that, dealing with my mental health, dealing my, with my mental as is with leading up to the games, um, every time stepping on the track, definitely expect it to be um, a record-breaking time or something like that. So just with that, um, pressure in itself was also just another thing with this actually been my first full professional career, my first full professional um, circuit this year due to, you know, the pandemic. So just considering all of that, all of that put together a long, long time with my, my agent, my sponsor, my my sponsorship, my family, uh, knowing we did know all of this going on. So, um, Heartbreaking. And here's the deal. They don't make their money. Off. It's not basketball. They're, they're, no one's buying tickets to track and field. They make their money from their sponsors. It's a hostage situation. She's forced to apologize. She's forced to stick to these talking points. When the truth is, she smoked weed after her mother died last week, guys. Okay? I don't need to be more redundant than that. She's forced to say this. She's forced to play this game. She's got to let us fight the fight for her. Shakari, I just want people to understand where you're coming from um, and tell me if if this is correct. But you it was a few days before your big race and the trials. You found out that your biological mother had passed away. Um, You found out when a reporter told you. Mm. And it was after that that um, you ingested some kind of marijuana. I I should mention we're in Oregon, it's legal in Oregon. You didn't violate any law, but it was against the rules of your sport. And as you said, you knew that. Change the but rules. Is, is that what happened? Is that how this unfolded? Honestly, um, yes, that is the story. I had an interview scheduled with my agent. I knew I was having an interview. I knew um, going into an interview. Like, it was, I was just thinking it would be a normal interview. And then on the interview, to hear that information come from a complete stranger, I would definitely triggering was definitely nerve shocking because it's just like how are you to tell me that like you know it's like not, and not, no offense against him at all he's just doing um his job but definitely that sent me in a state of mind in a state of of emotional panic if anything mm-hmm. and still knowing that i still even though i'm here i still have to go out and put on a performance for um put on a performance for my dream go out there and still compete to so what it is so yes yeah, definitely triggered and from there, just blinded, with, blinded by emotions, blinded by sadness, blinded by just. Come on, today's show, fight for her. Let's go. For the fact that Call it bullshit. I can't hide myself. So at least in some type of way, I was just trying to hide my pain. Yeah. You know, the um, Olympic officials, the U.S. track and field, the anti-doping agencies now have a decision before them. Um, unfortunately, you will not be able to compete in the Olympics in your in your race, your individual race, 100 meters. Um, but there is a chance. It's, it's a small chance, but there's a chance you could go to the Olympics and take part in the relay. Are you hopeful for that? Is that what you're holding out hope for at this moment? Right now, I'm just putting all of my time and energy into dealing with what I need to deal with to heal myself. So if I'm allowed to receive that blessing, then I'm grateful for it. But if not right now, I'm going to just focus on myself. Mm. You know, um, what would your message be to those who are considering that right now, who are thinking about that, and to your fans, you know, who have fallen in love with you and were so proud of your performance and maybe crushed just as you are in that moment? What would you want to say to them? I would like to say to my fans and my family, to my sponsorship, um, to the haters, too. I, I apologize as much as I'm disappointed. I know that when I swim on the track, I don't represent myself. I represent a community that has shown me great support, great love. And to y'all, I, I failed y'all. And so I apologize for the fact that I didn't know how to control my emotions or deal with my emotions during that time. She's apolo- um, she has to apologize. What world the, is this? And when I would just leave with my fans, or I would just leave out there is that 
like I tweeted and said yesterday, I'm human. We're human. Um, my statement, what I always say in my interviews, um, I want to be as transparent as possible with you guys, whether it's good, whether it's bad. But when it comes to Shakira Richardson, it's never been a steroid. It will never be a steroid attached to the name Shakira Richardson. The charge and what the, the situation was, was marijuana. I'm not encouraging anybody to do it. I'm not saying, oh, don't do it or anything like that. But if you choose to do things um, in your personal time or things like that, you just should know, all right, be aware of the consequences or just know, or just find different ways to just cope or do what it is that you, that will make you feel better. But Beware of the legal consequences to smoking legal marijuana or having an edible or whatever the case may be. You know, I, like I said, she's she's forced to say this because she's uh, she's pleading for her sponsors. Now, I would say this: if any sponsors had the gall to even drop her, they they should be boycotted because we all know the more we all know morally, it wasn't performance enhancing, and it was days before the race, and we need to look we need to look over that. Test her again. Test her again. You know before the Olympics start. You know, there's got to be some contingency here. You know what I mean? I don't know. Oh, or like a strike program. Like, oh, you're on two strikes, you know, third strike, you're out. This is this is absurd. It's absurd, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. If you guys don't mind, hit the like button and subscribe. Check out the vlog channel. Patreon is up. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'm doing a live stream tomorrow, Saturday morning at 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. That'll be my weekend live stream. Everyone have a safe and happy 4th of July weekend. Please be careful out there. Don't drink and drive. Don't blow your hands up with uh, fireworks. Just be careful. And let's just... Let's get back to critically thinking and not just look at what the rules are, but what's right and wrong. Who's on the winning side of this? Who's on the losing side of this? Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now.